Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners, my name is Stephen Kariungi and uh, today we continue with our topic of discussion, nitrogen and its compounds. Uh, during the last lesson, uh, we discussed how aqueous ammonia can be used to identify metallic ions by use of the color of the precipitate, whereby we saw that zinc ions form a white precipitate with aqueous ammonia, copper 2 ions form a pale blue precipitate with aqueous ammonia, ion 2 ions form a pale green precipitate, and ion 3 ions form a brown precipitate. So we'd like us to have a summary of the colors of precipitates formed by different ions when they react with aqueous ammonia. So we'll summarize this in form of a table whereby we'll have on one column the cations, the color change when a few drops of aqueous ammonia are added, and the color change when excess aqueous ammonia is added. So we'll continue with the same here. So this is continued. So we'll start with calcium ions. Uh, calcium ions, when a few drops of uh, aqueous ammonia are added, there is no precipitate formed. And that is because aqueous ammonia does not have enough hydroxide ions to precipitate calcium ions. Also, when you add excess, there is still no precipitate uh, formed. Uh, but if you have magnesium ions, will form a white precipitate. And even on the addition of excess aqueous ammonia, the white precipitate remains. We continue further from magnesium ions and go to aluminium ions. They also form a white precipitate. And on the addition of excess ammonia, the white precipitate remains. Then, zinc ions, which also form a white precipitate. But when you add the excess aqueous ammonia, the white precipitate dissolves. into a colorless solution. Dissolves to form a colorless solution. So the zinc ions, they form a precipitate with the aqueous ammonia, but that precipitate dissolves. Then we go to lead two ions, also form a white precipitate, but the white precipitate remains. So it doesn't dissolve. So unlike zinc, whereby the white precipitate is dissolving with excess uh, aqueous ammonia. So this forms the basis of uh, chemistry practical, a section that is called qualitative analysis. The qualitative analysis, whereby when you are given a solution, you can be told to identify which cations are there. 
by adding a few drops of aqueous ammonia or adding excess ammonia. And then the color of the precipitate will be as indicated here. So we want to make our table slightly longer. So we are saying that uh, lead two ions, then we go to ion two ions. Ion two ions, we saw that they form a pale green precipitate with a few drops of aqueous ammonia. And when you add excess ammonia, the pale green precipitate remains. The precipitate remains. It doesn't dissolve. Then ion three ions. These ones form a brown precipitate. And the brown precipitate remains. Even when you add excess ammonia, it doesn't change. Now, there's something that I want to uh, explain here. That the pale green precipitate is as a result of ion 2 ions. And the brown precipitate is as a result of ion 3 ions. Remember, we have two types of ion or two ion cations. Two positive ions from ion. So if you take this pale green precipitate and you leave it somewhere exposed to the air, it is slowly turns brown. It is slowly turns brown. And the reason for that is because the green, uh, the green ion 2 ions are oxidized by the atmospheric air to brown ion 3 ions. So that is as a result of oxidation of ion 2 to ion 3. Then copper, copper ions, they form a pale blue precipitate. But when you add excess ammonia, the precipitate dissolves. The precipitate dissolves into a deep blue solution into a deep blue solution. So the precipitate in the case of copper and zinc is dissolving. And I think we have uh, identified most of the cations uh, using aqueous ammonia and the color of precipitates uh, that they form. Now, <clears throat> uh, I would want us to ask ourselves two things. Why the zinc ions and the copper ions form precipitates that later dissolve with excess ammonia. <clears throat> and on that we can say that copper 2 ions and zinc ions form precipitates form precipitates which dissolve with aqueous ammonia. And the reason for that is because this is due to formation of complex ions. Copper 2 ions and zinc ions, they have the ability to form complex ions. And that's why their precipitates are dissolving when you put excess ammonia. So, for example, in the case of copper, copper 2 ions, the white precipitate we saw earlier is copper 2 hydroxide, which is pale blue. When you add excess aqueous ammonia, we form a complex ion that is uh, written as this, a complex ion so this is a pale 
blue precipitate of copper, you add excess aqueous ammonia, you form a complex ion that is called tetraamine copper 2 ion. Tetraamine copper 2 ion. And this is a deep blue solution. And that is why we are saying that the white, uh, the blue precipitate uh, in uh, copper dissolves into a deep blue solution. For the case of zinc, the precipitate was due to the formation of zinc hydroxide. Zinc hydroxide. And when you add excess ammonia solution, there is formation of a similar complex ion that we call tetraamine zinc 2 ion. So here zinc is a white precipitate. But when you add excess aqueous ammonia just like we had done up there we form tetraamine tetraamine is 4 amine 4 ammonia tetraamine zinc 2 ion and uh, tetraamine zinc 2 ion is a colorless solution and that explains why the white precipitate is dissolving when you add the excess of ammonia. So it's only copper and zinc that form precipitates when you add a few drops of aqueous ammonia. And then when you add the excess ammonia, those precipitates dissolve into a colorless solution for zinc and into deep blue solution for copper. And that is because of their ability to form complex ions. And you can see that this ion is complex. Tetraamine copper 2 ion. Tetraamine zinc 2 ion. So our assignment for today. So the assignment, the first question, explain why precipitates of zinc and copper ions dissolve in excess ammonia, like you have just seen. Number two, write a chemical equation to show each of the reactions in A above. The reactions that are taking place here support each one of them with a chemical equation. So we are going to stop there until next time. Goodbye.